Welcome back to Somerset Place State Historic Site. We are standing along the carriage drive leading to the Collins family home, which you can see behind me. Uh, now the Collins home is original, but it was not the first plantation house at Somerset. That designation belongs to a lost building. The first reference to a dwelling house at Lake Phelps appears in a 1791 court document only seven years after the formation of the Lake Company. This structure was only used by the three business partners when they visited the plantation, so it was not a permanent residence. Instead, Josiah Collins I, Dr. Samuel Dickinson, and Nathaniel Allen lived in Edenton and ran the business as absentee landlords. Yet their dwelling house on the lake was still substantial because an advertisement that appeared in the Edenton Gazette on November 26, 1806 stated that, quote, there is also a good dwelling house two stories high and all convenient outhouses. After the partnership dissolved, Josiah I assumed full ownership. In early 1819, at the age of 82, he was visiting the lake and staying at the dwelling house when he suffered a devastating fall. He passed away on May 14th, which led to an inventory of his property at the plantation. This document gives us a unique glimpse inside the dwelling house. As you can see here, the structure was fully and lavishly furnished, with eight bedroom suites, four tables, 30 chairs, and a large quantity of tableware. The inventory does not specify how many rooms were in the building, but it does list four andirons, which could indicate four rooms. Now, a survey taken two years later might also show the location of this dwelling house as being near the kitchen, which has been established from surveyor's notes to be in the exact location of the site's extant kitchen. Nearby is a building that's oriented toward the canal, appears a bit longer than the two-story slave dwellings, and is in the same location as the current Collins family home. Given its location and size, the structure is very likely the owner's dwelling house. By the time of the 1821 survey, ownership of the plantation had passed to Josiah Collins II, who stayed at the house more frequently than his father, but still did not live there. On one of his later visits, he arrived at the lake in December 1827 and spent most of the following year preparing for his eldest son, Josiah III, to take over the management of the property when he turned 21 in 1829. Of this long stay, neighbor Ebenezer Pettigrew wrote that, quote, Mr. Collins has been on the lake greater part of this year without his family. They have not yet returned from their northern visit. He seems to enjoy the loneliness of this place, such as the effect of age. He's very unlike his family. They are gay and fond of the world. When newlyweds Josiah III and Mary Riggs Collins arrived in December 1829, they decided to transform the plantation into their personal estate, which led to the construction of a new 14-room mansion between 1837 and 1839. We don't know where the young family stayed during the mansion's construction, nor how much, if any, of the two-story dwelling house was incorporated into the new Collins family home. However, the existing house offers a tantalizing clue while most of the interior door jams and thresholds are standardized, four are not. These four are located off the hallway near the stairwell and are substantially wider than the others, leading to the conclusion that the front and rear portions of the house were not built at the same time. Yet as with most of our lost buildings, so much is a mystery. To learn more about Somerset's transformation from the late 18th to the early 19th centuries and how that impacted the plantation's residents, join us for a guided tour offered upon request Tuesday through Saturday. Be sure to also click the subscribe button and ring the bell to receive notifications about our latest videos. Until next time, thank you for tuning in.